Hello, it is Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle. We had, I thought, a very fun Monday puzzle, a pretty straightforward solve with a very clever and fun theme yesterday. So we'll see see how today uh, squares up by comparison. Should be another relatively gentle puzzle, though. Um, I don't actually think I have any corrective comments from yesterday, which is sort of extraordinary. That rarely happens. Um, apologies if if you did post one and I missed it, but I didn't see any at a quick glance. Um, so I'll mention a couple things quickly. The new Twitter account, at The Daily Solve, if you'd like to follow posts about this series on a daily basis. And um, the Patreon campaign is live at patreon.com slash daily solve. And finally, the... Um, the, da- the uh, sorry, I'm losing my uh, marbles today, apparently, the Discord chat server, the place where you can chat with others about this channel, about crosswords, about other puzzles, and about crossword construction, is available in the link underneath the video to join that uh, community. And if you back the Patreon, you will also get special additional access to that Discord chat server. But the, most of it is free for everybody to join, so feel free to do that. And um, I'll, I'll mention again the mugs that have been going out to Patreon benefactors, people at the benefactor tier and above, and I've, I've increasingly seen more of those in the wild, so that's exciting, and I'm very much looking forward to getting my own mug myself when uh, when I've backed when I've, when I've backed my own Patreon campaign for long enough to qualify for it, which I think will be at the end of this month. So that'll be fun. And when I get that, I will show you what it looks like on the channel, on the video. Anyway, let's move on to today's Tuesday puzzle. This is a crossword constructed by Jennifer Lee and Victor Galson and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And I don't think I have much else to say. So let's go right on with the solve. Ready to get started? Okay. To analyze grammatically is to parse. This is something we certainly need to do Uh, several dozen times a day for solving the crossword. An extreme devotee informally. Extreme devotee informally. Often this ends up being Stan for sort of an extreme fan referencing an Eminem song of the same name. But, and so that's probably overriding my ability to think of other synonyms here. So let's keep going. Organization for Pistons and Rockets. My guess is that is this is the NBA. I think this is the NBA. Let's let's look around. Netflix debut, perhaps. Could be a new TV show. No, new TV movie. New TV series. No. Could be new TV movie. That seems a little weird. Let's keep looking. Ice you can wear. Ah. So this would be bling. And essentially we're matching the idiomatic quality of the clue. To the answer. So in this case, ice is referring to, you know, diamonds and and things like that. It's a it's a slang term for that sort of jewelry. And bling, similarly, is an equally idiomatic slang uh, use of that word. So they match, and that's typically you'll typically get that in the clues, which is helpful for solving if you uh, if you correctly parse those clues. Here we have not quite right, which could be a miss. And that does make me think that the Pistons and Rockets organization is the NBA, the National Basketball Association. So let's go with that. And we'll, I don't think I ever actually checked the crosses on parse, so we should do that as well. Adoptees from the ASPCA, that's the uh, American Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals. And so these would be pets. You adopt pets from the SPA. One way to run, you could run amok if you're out of control. An Indian flatbread is a roti. Um, One of them anyway is a roti. And go, go, go. Speed something, what is this? Overact. Okay, so overact as opposed to overreact, which is actually how I initially parsed this, even though I read it correctly, is to emote, to put too much emotion into the delivery of your lines, for instance. And a fish that may have only vestigial fins would be an eel. I didn't even know um, some eels had vestigial fins. That's interesting. 
God and his wit. Oh, <laughs> this is this is funny. I actually know this poem, um, and I and I and I referenced it in its entirety because it's only four words longer than this quote. Um, this is by Ogden Nash, a um, I guess early mid century American poet of light verse. He wrote extremely quippy poems. And this one that is being quoted is, God in his wisdom made the fly and then forgot to tell us why. And that's the entire poem. And I assume this is related to the theme, but I don't see what it means. We've got a little couplet, and it looks like we have other couplets throughout. Tell me, O oh octopus, I begs, is those things arms or are they legs? Maybe this is, is this all Ogden Nash? Oh, right. Sorry. I could just fill this in to tell us why. Sorry. I, I just read, I, I, I spoke aloud the answer to the clue, and then I didn't fill it in. First, I didn't see that it even fit. I don't know what I was doing there. Anyway, or is they legs? I bet this is. Yes. Tell me, O oh octopus, I begs, is those things arms or is they legs? And do we have any other of these that we'll be able to get? The cow is of the, so I'm doing the thing that I did yesterday, in fact, which is to try and solve the whole theme as soon as I see it, which people seem to like. And it is fun. I never used to do it until I started doing this series, but it's sort of, it is, it is a fun additional challenge. The clue is of the bovine ilk. One end is moo, the other milk. And it looks like, are those the only three? No, we have one more. The trouble with a kitten that, the trouble with a kitten is that eventually it becomes a cat? I bet that's right. I, I vaguely remember most of these, I think. What a fun, what a fun theme. Okay, so here we have Decepticon's enemy in the Transformers films. Wow, what are, what are the chances of this? This actually came up in the crossword the other day, and I had to get it through crosses, but it was Autobot. I do remember that. Let's look at that. Um, I don't know why I skipped to that one in particular. We have a lot of crosses at this point, so we can probably largely fly through this puzzle with all of these um, clues. Mr. Tumnus in the Narnia books and others. I actually don't know. I read the first Narnia book as a child, but I didn't particularly enjoy it for whatever reason. I mean, I suppose as a child, you could enjoy or not enjoy something for basically any reason whatsoever. Well, that's true of adults as well. I just mean my taste as a child wasn't particularly consistent or well-defined. Anyway, I don't know who Mr. Tumnus is, so I'm gonna have to skip that. Zoomed in map would be an inset. Black would be ooh, I suppose. I'll pass would be na, maybe. And impassive. Interesting with these two Ys. Let's let's look elsewhere. Extreme devotee informally. Right. What is this? Oh, a fiend. Right. If you're a crossword fiend, you're an extreme devotee of crosswords. Egypt's Sadat, Enwar Sadat. And impassive, dryly, dry, dryly what? Mr. Tum, oh, Mr. Tumnus and Learning Books, Learning Books and others. Was Mr. Tumnus a fawn? I don't know, but I, I, I don't think I entirely noted that this is um, a plural clue because it's not just Mr. Tumnus; it's Mr. Tumnus and others. So several of whatever Mr. Tumnus is, which must be a fawn, I suppose. Um, sort of a satyr, right? And then Lowry, who wrote The Giver, this I do know, Lois Lowry. So we have we have um, this very specific theme, which I believe to be Ogden Nash poetry, but there are also quite a few answers dealing with children's liturgy, literature generally. I don't know if Ogden Nash necessarily is considered a sort of children's poet, expressly, but he certainly wrote the kind of poetry that is very easy for children to parse and appreciate. So here we're also, we've got Lois Lowry, who's a, um, The Giver is a classic children's book, and we've got a reference to the Narnia books, which are children's fantasy books. So there's a nice um, carry through, I guess, of the explicit theme with other cluing throughout the puzzle, which is nice. Common street name in the Northeast must be Elm Street, as in a miracle on or a nightmare on. 
blank sports video game. That would be Wii Sports, a Nintendo video game from, I don't know, a decade ago or so, maybe more than that. A Netflix, right, Netflix debut. New series, boy, that harder than I would like it to be. Big Home, Brings Home could be Earns. Oh, new release? Netflix debut, perhaps. A new release, wow. I was really thinking it was going to be something more particular to Netflix in the sense of being television, which is what Netflix primarily focuses on these days as opposed to films, or something with streaming. But it's just generally a new release, which you never know. Blank mode, a la mode. I suppose I could still be proven wrong about that. Dry, oh, impassive is dry-eyed. I see, I see, dry-eyed. Not emotional, not teary. Best possible could be ideal. A Genesis Garden, Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis in the Bible. Puts on the payroll, it's hires. Oops. Voiced as grievances, aired one's grievances. And civil rights activist Ida B. Wells. And here we go. Here's our revealer of the theme right in the center of the grid and not down towards the uh, southeastern sector, as is often the case. Poet, indeed. Poet Nash, who wrote the lines in 1724, 47, and 58 across. Ogden Nash. This, this would be maybe a tough puzzle, actually, if you didn't know any of these or anything about Ogden Nash. Although it doesn't seem like a dramatically difficult puzzle throughout in terms of the crosses and I guess at a certain point, hopefully you would get the get the gist of these poems. And I I definitely remember the fly poem, but these others I didn't necessarily specifically remember. I mean they sort of ring a bell, but I but I largely filled them out by trying to infer what would come after the quoted bits. Although again, it was easier to do that, know being basically familiar with the source and knowing what the what the uh, mood, the sort of tenor of Ogden Nash's poetry was. Okay, card in Uno. I don't remember this. I haven't played Uno in ages, but it must be Skip based on those crosses. And then Go, Go, Go. Oh, Step on It. And then Eye of Blank, part of a witch's brew. Eye of Newt. Is that from Macbeth? Does that come from somewhere else? Walking Aid could be a cane. To profess could be to aver, to state something opinion as true. A festival that awards the Palm d'Or would be Cannes, the Cannes Film Festival, Cannes, I suppose. Like a low battery icon. Red, I suppose? Sometimes they're red. And to eschew something is to avoid it. Listen, bub. So now see here. And again, we're sort of matching the idiomatic tone of listen, bub, with the answer, now see here. These are both informal exclamatory expressions, I guess you could say. Um, and they match. And that's just a, it's a convention of gluing in the New York Times crossword. So to bring out could be educe. And <laughs> what the nouns and verb in this clue doesn't do. They don't agree, because if they did agree, it would be what the nouns and verb in this clue don't do because you'd be matching the plural uh, nouns, not, which in this case is actually nouns and verb, with the correct form of doesn't, which would be don't. And that is actually another nice tie-in to the theme, because here in, in this poem we have, tell me, O oh, octopus, I begs, is those things arms or is they legs? And that is also a case in which the uh, nouns and the verbs do not agree. So this, this is such a... a, a tidy little um, crossword here. It's actually very much in keeping, I think, with the pithy spirit of the poetry about, around which it's themed. So here we have vibes, which are auras, and then crossing that, we have that's gotta hurt, which is ouch, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Shirley Temple, e.g. Well, Shirley Temple herself was a famous child film star, but also there is a cocktail. No, I guess you'd call it a mocktail named after her because it's non-alcoholic. It's a it's a sort of imitation cocktail that I think is cola-based that's often served to children. I don't remember what's in a Shirley Temple. Maybe cola and cherry juice or something like that. I'm not sure. But you'd probably call it a mocktail, and let's see if that fits. Long part of a horse, short part of a giraffe. <laughs> um, the mane? Does a giraffe have a short mane? 
Doctor's generic recommendation. Meds, I suppose, because you can have generic medication as opposed to name brand medication, which typically are chemically identical. And something often lent but never returned. Uh, maybe it's not meds, sorry, because I would assume that something often lent but never returned is an ear. You can lend your lend someone your ear, you listen to them, but you don't return an ear. So what is the doctor's generic recommendation? Oh, rest, I suppose. Okay, so that was either either a little bit of misdirection or I misdirected myself. Um, but I assume the use of the word generic was intentional to allude to the notion of generic medication. In this case, it just means a recommendation a doctor often makes by default. Rest, get some rest. Here we have prefix with inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, which could be a <laughs> could be a generic medication prescribed by a doctor, in fact. Parts of a Facebook feed would be posts, and chum would be pal. Let's be real. Let's face it. Let's be real. And something said to be in the eyes or the belly. Fire. You could have fire in your eyes or fire in your belly. And they both sort of mean you're excited and ready to go, but I guess have slightly different connotations. One named singer born Gabriella Sarmiento Wilson. I'm not sure. I don't, don't think I know offhand. Much internet humor, I guess is memes, M-E-M-E-S. And we, there isn't an indication that this is plural, but it worked perfectly well as a plural answer. So I think that's probably right. And a French wine valley, I think it's the Rhone, the Rhone Valley. And then one named singer born Gabriella Sarmiento Wilson, her. Is there a singer who goes by her? I did not know that. I hope that's right. Straw, basically. Straw, basically. A tube, I suppose. A straw, as opposed to the substance straw, like hay, but rather a tube that you put in a drink through which to suck your liquid. Weird. That was a weird sentence. I didn't like that. Okay. Home of the Bruins. Uh, the UC uh, UCLA, I believe, is the home of the Bruins. University of California at Los Angeles. And to refuse to continue... Balk, I suppose. You could balk at a request and not, not follow through on it. Here we have e-commerce site for homemade goods would be Etsy. Oops. And like a good biscuit would be flaky. And this is a biscuit in the sort of American South sense of a biscuit. Um, often served with gravy. Here we have Beth Harmon's weakness in the Queen's Gambit. So this was actually that Netflix series, the Netflix series that debut that was once a new release on Netflix. And what was her weakness? Pills, I suppose. She took, I did watch that series. She took, she abused uh, pills, possibly generic medications prescribed by a doctor. All right. UV blocking measure is SPF, I think sun protection factor is what that is. And L blank, Spanish hero, that would be L Cid, C I D. Oceans, motions would be tides. Ocean Tides, straightforward. And one of the Manning brothers, I do recognize this name from American football, Eli Manning. And then, oh, here we've got another American football clue, I guess. They they protect the QB would be the O-line, the offensive line, I suppose. I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have been able to get that without crosses, but um, it's sort of interesting, two, two NFL clues crossing one another. Okay, alternative to Google or AOL. So these are search, what would be? So Google is as, obviously is a search engine, but also has infinite other internet services. And what does AOL do now? America Online, they were a preeminent internet service provider in the dial-up days, but I don't even, I don't really know what they actually provide now. So I might need crosses for this. Like an overachieving personality. I don't know and dangerous as a situation. Heavy, perhaps? I'm not really sure what's going on here. To flub is to err, to make an error. And yes, captain, could be I, A-Y-E. Oh, a dangerous situation could be a hairy situation. Oh, and an alternative to Google or AOL would be Yahoo. I don't entirely know. I suppose they're all sort of portals. They're all sites that one might plausibly have as a homepage when you start your browser. 
I don't really know what they do anymore. I suppose Yahoo still is a search engine. AOL, I think, is sort of a generic web starting point with news and things like that on it, I guess. Okay, Scooby-Doo. Here we have the cartoon character. Didn't, didn't have to fill that one out. And then, like an overarching personality, is type A, and that crosses with Thanksgiving dinner ender, Thanksgiving dinner ending, sorry, which is pie. And there it is. All right. Still have some, some warm coffee remaining after that relatively speedy solve. So that was a fun puzzle. That was a very interesting puzzle in the sense that it was very thoroughly themed and was huge. The theme was made much, much easier, I think, by my existing familiarity with the subject matter, which isn't a huge surprise, obviously. If you are familiar with something in the crossword, you'll solve it more quickly. But I'm, it makes me very curious how people who may not be familiar with these short verses might have fared on this puzzle. And I did like how thoroughly the overall sort of tonal uh, milieu of this puzzle was explored in the answers with this Narnia clue, the Lois Lowry clue. Um, was there anything else like that? Um, and then there were other little little bits of, of echoes uh, throughout. So it was I thought a very nice, very, very tidy and um, uh, sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost conscientiously constructed. It was, it was all, the whole puzzle was really of a piece. So it was very nice. And I, I think not too difficult in terms of the other crosses. So hopefully, hopefully not too bad if you didn't know um, if you didn't have any grounding in the, 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 the theme area. I'm, I am very curious to know what others made of it. Um, so, so do let me know in the comments or in the, uh, or in the Discord uh, chat server. There is, uh, there typically every day in the Discord chat server is a new thread in the New York Times, the NYT crosswords um, room, I guess, in there. And um, in that thread, people discuss the day's puzzle. So sometimes it can look like there's no new activity in the New York Times crosswords channel in the Discord, but that's usually because it's inside of a thread that you that you can look in and, and find people discussing it. So I will I will go check that after I publish this. Anyway, that was the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please do subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so you have a very easy way to see these videos as they go live each morning, either notified about them, not notified about them, but either way, they will be there in your subscription section, ready for you to peruse. Peruse. Yeah. Um, and if you think you know someone who might like this, pass it along. Why not? They might enjoy getting a <laughs> crash course in the light verse of Ogden Nash, the animal poetry of Ogden Nash. I think I was particularly fortunate because the Ogden Nash book I had as a child was specifically a book of animal poems. So I probably read all of these, even though the, the, even though the only one I expressly remembered was the one about the fly. So I was fortunate that that was the first one for me. Okay, um, I suppose that's it. Do check out the Patreon campaign if you would like to directly support this channel and help it become an ongoing, sustainable enterprise. I do very much appreciate everybody who's done so. You can get the enhanced access to the Discord server. You can get that mug if you back at the um, benefactor level. And of course, the thing I forgot to mention was you get all of the bonus solves. I just put up another week of mini crossword speed solves on the on the Patreon uh, campaign yesterday. So if you are a supporter, um, feel free to go check that out. And uh, today, I would also like to thank a few patrons for helping this thing continue. And the people I would like to thank are Jeff and Sinead Fidlaki, as well as the inestimable Hood Monster, and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you, Jeff and Sinead. Thank you, Hood Monster. And thank you, Shantanu. I very much appreciate your generous and ongoing support. It means a lot to me. And with that, thank you to everyone else who backed the Patreon. Thank you to you for watching this video. And thanks in advance if you come back to watch tomorrow's video, The Wednesday Puzzle. I hope you do. But until that point, 
please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care.